The keys to male discipline. The keys to male discipline. Now, you, he, 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 the, the passage of scripture that was read last night, male and female created he, them. So when we talk about the keys to male discipline, we're talking about the keys to discipline for all people. Since out of male came everybody else. Since out of one man came everybody else. And so these keys you can take and teach to your sons and your daughters. You understand what I'm saying? It is discipline that we're going to be talking about. And so um, I, I want you to prepare your heart to hear what we're going to say. Now, uh, everybody, um, speak, uh, uh, repeat after me, please. I, I would be able to learn a whole lot if, if is a big, powerful word, you know. It means now connecting what the condition of being able to learn if I didn't know so much already. The thing that keeps us from learning is what we already know. Now, I have a manner attitude towards life. Anybody understands manner? You know what manner is? You remember? You remember manner? All right, that, that was the, 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 what the Israelites call it. God didn't call it manna. The Israelites said, oh, manna. Manna means, what is it? Okay? But it's, been come, it, it, it's, it, it's become known as manna because that's how it's written. But manna came with specific instructions. Anybody can tell me what those instructions were? Only take and store up and uh, 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 take what you need for today. Because if you, if you try to store up, what would happen to the one that you store up? Wormy. So yesterday's manna is no good for today. This is a brand new day. This day has never been here before. You see, we keep thinking that we see the same things over and over. You have never seen this. Even if you heard about discipline, you've never heard discipline spoken about today before. And if you've heard me speak about discipline for 20 times before, and this is the 21st time, this is the first time you're going to be hearing me for the 21st time. You understand me? There's great opportunity right here, right now. We miss the essence of, of understanding things because we get, we, we allow the things that we do regularly to become routine. I don't know if you've ever seen that the NBA preseason has started now and you'll see fellas steal the ball from the top of the key and go down and nobody's within 30 feet of them and blow the layup. Have you seen it before? Yeah. And you'll see it again. Because things that you do regularly you don't pay attention to. You don't take your, your time and, and care with it. Everything is important. You have to take time and care with everything. Because this moment, and anybody who knows me to talk know that I speak about one thing and one thing only, and that is what you're doing right now with this moment. How are you maximizing this moment? Whether we're talking about discipline, talking about taking care of your, your responsibilities, whatever it is, how are you using this moment. How are you making sure that this moment is benefiting you? That's very important. And if you don't pay attention, and I'm going to spend time getting you to pay attention, it's worth doing that because that's the soil I want to cultivate. I want to till this soil so when we put seeds in and we start giving them some water, we're going to get a good harvest. I have some goals today. First goal, I want to hear from the Holy Spirit. We want to figure out how we're going to do that. So that's the first goal. That's the primary goal. Now, the second goal is I want to examine our current understanding of discipline. What, 
you currently understand, what we currently understand, what we call discipline, what comes into your mind when you hear that word, discipline. Then, I want to introduce a new understanding of discipline for the first time heard anywhere in the world, right here, and you're present. Amen. Everybody should be saying hallelujah to that. <laughs> See, because we think that we have to get it from overseas. We have to get it from a name. I have a bit of a name, but it ain't like the names that you know. You understand what I'm saying? And so, yeah, yeah, well, that's Dr. Bard, but, you know, I told Pastor Miles last night, there's a passage of scripture where it talks about Jesus, and it says that he came to his own, and his own received him not. And I said to my family in my house, I said, that ain't happening in here. I'm declaring that. <laughs> that will not happen in this house. <laughs> you need to declare that in your household, eh? Because you will be trying to wash them with the water of the word and instruct them. And it'll go, I pass me, yeah, yeah. Because they always figure it's a conflict of interest. You're trying to get them to do something. <laughs> but somebody else will mention it at a time and they say, Why are you hear what he said? See, but I've been telling you that for three years. <laughs> My Lord. Overseas. Anything outside your house is overseas. <laughs> you have to understand the concepts. Then we're going to discuss the keys. We can't discuss everything, but we're going to discuss the important things to discipline and how to apply these keys successfully. All right. It's not just enough to have the keys. You got to drive the car. <laughs> Having the keys, don't move the car. All right. Then we're going to discuss the benefits of becoming a disciplined man using these principles, using these keys. Okay. Then how to begin. What you need. I'm not just going to tell you what you need to do, but I'm going to say this is how you can start. And then I'm going to leave you with a take-home message, a simple take-home message. If you say amen when I speak, when Pastor Miles speaks, when Bishop Bloomer speaks, when T.D. Jakes speaks, and you're in agreement, does that make what all these people that I've just mentioned said? Does that make it true? No. Does it make it true? No. How are you going to get to the truth of the matter for you? How are you going to get to the truth of the matter for you? It is the Holy Spirit that will guide you to all truth. That's what my Bible says. Does your Bible say that? Okay. So your amens don't mean that I'm right. You're disagreeing with me don't mean that I'm wrong. <laughs> Even if you disagree with me, you still got to go check the Holy Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? So whether you agree or disagree, you got to go check the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit guide you to all truth. That's a process you must go through. Otherwise, you all down the road and, you know, headed towards Atlanta and you're supposed to be going to New York. Now, you know you're using up, you know how much gas costs these days when you're driving. So why is this important? Because the Holy Spirit will guide us to all truth. Okay. Often you remember in the Bible, Jesus would say, He that hath ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He says it in the New Testament and uh, early on, and it says it in, in, in Revelation. He that hath ears. You have to choose to listen and you have to choose to hear what is being said. It's an act of your will. An act of your will. Okay. We want to hear from the Spirit because we want to walk in the Spirit. The Bible says, walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It didn't say you won't have lust of the flesh. It says that the lust of the flesh you have, 
you will not fulfill. And that's an important thing for you to realize. Don't expect yourself. Don't think of yourself, the Bible says, more highly than you ought. In other words, expect yourself not to have lust of the flesh. You're going to have lust of the flesh, but you will not fulfill them when you walk in the spirit. Faith comes by hearing. And so after you have heirs and you have heard, you have to hear again. You have to